I am at Falmouth Harbour walking along the pier on what is a very, very windy day. But um, I'm quite excited because I'm here to see a bin. But this isn't any old bin. This is a sea bin. And it should be bobbing up and down in the water somewhere amongst these boats. Right, so it's not down here. Can I... It not down over there. So I've got a feeling. Hey! There it is! So here we go. This is a sea bin. Now, just like a litter bin on land, it is the job of a sea bin to collect litter and plastic that are around the marina. This new litter gathering technology is the first of its kind here in Cornwall, but it joins a network of sea bins. There are currently about 860 sea bins dotted around in marinas across the globe, and they are collecting rubbish and debris every single day. But how does it work? of docks like this so they can go up and down with the tides but it also means they can be plugged into electricity and they need power because in the sea bin is a pump and that pump is working to pull water in through and out of the bin but whilst that pump is sucking water through the bin it also sucks in any marine debris plastic sometimes seaweed that will be collecting and gathering on the surface around the bin but because the basket is made of mesh, it has lots of little holes in it. So this lets the water in and out, and it just leaves all of the big solid things behind. So this bin will be working 24 hours, but it has to be emptied once a day, and it looks like it's nearly full. This is Vicky, who works for the harbour, and it's one of her jobs to empty the sea bin every day. Vicky, can you kind of explain what it is that we have to do to empty it? Sure. Well, what we do is we turn it off. Yep. Um, so then the basket comes up and then we can easily grab it and bring it out and have a look at what we've got. And then is it, just, is it just a simple case of putting the mesh bag back in the bin and then you're done? Yep. Oh, brilliant. There you go. That's so easy. <laughs> and so you do that, what, once a day? Once a day, depending on the circumstances. Right. And there it is, back in action. Because it's so windy, we're going to take this tray inside one of the boats and have a look to see what type of things the sea bin is managing to capture. So Vicky, you empty it once a day. Mm -hmm. So what type of things are you normally capturing? We capture a lot of wrappers um, and small polystyrene pieces, mm -hmm. an array of things and lots of seaweed, obviously. I was going to say, why is there so much seaweed? Is that is that something about today? Yeah, today we've got a very strong easterly wind, which will bring a lot of seaweeds in. OK, so sometimes it will just be plastics and rubbish. Other times you might get a yeah. whole array of yeah seaweed as well. Whatever's floating on the top of the ocean we get. So when you empty the bin, what do you do with the content? Um, basically I try and separate the plastics out from the seaweed. The seaweed goes back into the ocean where it belongs and we try and recycle or dispose of safely the plastics. Okay, so shall we see what we can find? Yeah, let's go for it. Alright, so already we have plastic wrapper. A small bit of cord. Cord. Oh yeah, so that's probably been left over from some sort of kind of fishing. Yeah. Fishing stuff maybe. Chocolate that's wrappers. It. Yeah, and then we yeah. get these tiny bits of polystyrene as well. Um, so we're not quite sure where they come from, but it might be sort of flotation devices. A lot of those have got polystyrene in them. So oh, so right, if they're breaking, breaking down. down. Yeah. Oh, look what this is. Here we go. Classic little bits of uh, bottle tops. Yeah. <laughs> Plastics in the ocean can cause a big problem for marine life. Sometimes they might get tangled in bits of net or plastic string and twine, and they could also mistake it for food, especially bits like these little balls of polystyrene. If an animal mistakes these for food, these can't be digested in their stomachs, but they'll stay there, leaving the animal feeling full when actually they're not getting any proper food. So this can lead to illness and starvation. And then you also have the problem of microplastics entering our food chain. Oh, hang on, here we go. Plastic bottles. Yeah. Classic. Classic thing to be finding bobbing up and down. <gasps> Lollipop sticks. Oh, gosh, wow. 
So I know that you tend to empty it once a day. Yeah. But I can imagine that on some days you could probably empty it more if you wanted to. Yeah, particularly on today. So mm. it's filling out really fast with seaweed and things like that. I think that might be all of the bits separated. So all of this stuff, we'll make sure that we dispose of that correctly. Yeah. And then this, back into the ocean. Back into the ocean, yeah. Great. Definitely. Thank you so much. No worries. A sea bin can catch about one ton of waste every single year. That's about the same weight as a baby humpback whale. That's amazing, it's a lot of rubbish. However, can you believe that over 8 million tons of plastic alone ends up in our oceans every single year? So whilst the sea bins are doing a brilliant job of keeping our marinas clean, it doesn't solve our global plastic problem. The good news is, inventions like the sea bin are just the start of the many ways we can help. And there are people world over who are doing their part to help clean up the oceans. The sea bin and other waste collection inventions are helping to clean up ocean plastic, but we can only hope that we don't need them in the future. The best thing we can do is to reduce the amount of single-use plastic we use and dispose of it correctly so it doesn't end up in the wrong place. What sort of thing could you be doing to help reduce the amount of single-use plastic you use at home? Let me know, I'd love to know your ideas. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more, stay curious, and I'll see you soon. Bye.